This is my daughter Batul, and she will be modeling for us today, inshallah, in giving some different examples of hijab. I'm going to call this the cockatoo hijab, and the reason is because of the fringe going all the way up there, and um, a lot of her hair showing. This is probably because she was um, embedded in the cultural aspect of hijab and has not truly understood what the philosophy of hijab and outer modesty and all those things really mean. And this is why she's trying to um, comply with how it is that she wants to be as a female and also at the same time uh, restrict her abilities as well. We can see that um, she's wearing a very tight revealing top, supposedly, and that is, of course, uh, Islamically prohibited as well. And she's wearing these uh, very, very tight uh, pants as well. It's like as if they've been spray-painted on her. Along with this, you can see that her um, arm is showing, instead of uh, covering all the way till below the wrist, we can see that there's a fair amount of her arms showing. We can see that she has nail polish on, and that is also considered as zina and haram, along with these um, different uh, bangles, which are probably fake and plastic anyway. Then we go all the way down to her feet, and we can see that she is not wearing socks. With the same prohibition of covering of her um, of revealing of her hair and uh, these uh, other parts of her body, the feet also carry the same ruling where it is obligatory, it is wajib to cover the feet as well. Someone might say, well, you know, who's going to look at my feet anyway? But we can say the same thing about the shin, we can say the same thing about this area, we can probably even say the same thing um, in regards to the front part of the hair and someone might say that it is not something that people are going to be attracted to. We're not talking about attraction, we're talking about compliancy to the strict religious guidelines of Islamic dress code for women. This is the Cleopatra hijab, and we can see that her hair up the top isn't showing, but because she's recently purchased some nice expensive earrings, she wants to show her earlobe, and of course we can see the neck, uh, all of their showing as well. News break, you are not Cleopatra. The whole reason for hijab is to deflect any type of attention or attraction, whether that be intentional or unintentional. And this is why these kind of zinas or decorations or adornments defeats the whole purpose of hijab and compliancy to what it is that God wants us to do. This is called the Minnie Mouse Hijab. We all know how difficult it is for Muslims in the West, finding your identity, trying to comply with everything that's around us, adjusting ourselves and assimilating. It's difficult. It certainly is difficult, especially for young girls who do not know any better maybe. And this is why it is an individual responsibility for each and every one of us to set good examples for those who are around us. This is called the convertible hijab. Whenever Qur'an is recited and whenever an imam or a maulana or a sheikh walks into the room, then straight away she puts on her scarf. When they leave the room, or when the Qur'an is closed and the recitation is finished, they take it off again. I would rather call this the hypocrite hijab, because all of a sudden there's some type of ghira button that has a switch on, switch off. And whenever someone that they know uh, walks past them, all of a sudden the ghira button is on, but for everyone else around the world, the ghira button is switched off. This is the CBB hijab, or the barely on hijab, where she's just thrown it on, she can't be bothered for anything else, hair is showing, a little bit of the neck, uh, ears are probably showing as well, and she hates everything and everyone around her. This is called the camel hump hijab. You can see that her hair bun is 
larger than her head itself. And the fatter the hump is, the closer you are to God. This is the gangster hijab. She is wearing a nice headband. The scarf is also covering her, herself well. But the problem is the scarf is transparent. You can see her ear. You can see the six, seven studs that she has in her earring. That's probably why she chose to wear this scarf. And you can also see the neck as well. The problem here is that even though she does uh, understand herself as identifying hijab, but she wants to be the rebel and the thug, the gangster that she wants to be, and therefore she chooses her own fashion of hijab. This is the Nasa helmet hijab. The scarf is rolled round and round and round and round, so much so that the head becomes larger than the body. This is the Kardashian fashionista Paris runway type of hijab. And we could probably say that she's putting Kardashian to shame by the amount of cake face makeup that she has on and all the accessories and everything else. Why does she do this? Are there really sisters in the Ummah that do not know that makeup is haram? There are some, unfortunately, who know with certainty that it is prohibited for them to wear makeup in public, but yet they do so. Whether it be something light, or whether it be the cake face that um, some choose to have, it is not permissible. And she's wearing high heels, and all of this, and she's only walking down to Woolies. We can be elegant in our dressing. We are able to show how honorable we are in what it is that we do in presenting ourselves in public, but also at the same time uh, stick within the guidelines of Islamic dress codes. Is this what we want our sisters to wear here in the West? Probably not. This would be, in my view, a very good example of correct hijab. We can see that the headscarf is not transparent, it's not see-through. Nothing is showing as far as her neck, or her ears, or any of her hair. Also, all the way up till her chin is being covered, and as far as her face is concerned, there is absolutely no makeup. The colors that she's chosen are also dark, dull colors, so it doesn't bring any type of attention or attraction. And then we go down to her clothes. Her clothes are loose. Her clothes are not revealing in any way. The scarf is also covering the chest area. Her arms are completely covered all the way down till below her wrist. As far as her hands are concerned, she has no nail polish on. Then we go all the way down and she's wearing thick color, um, thick socks, and uh, none of her skin in any way is shown. She is wearing them, the clothes below her knees, and therefore this would be a wonderful example of how hijab should be. We need to empower our sisters and give them the confidence and the understanding that they need to elevate their self-esteem and make sure that they become the better people that we all want to be. Through righteousness, through self-awareness, through obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all together, collectively, we share that responsibility. Each one of us must represent Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. Every single sister should be a Fatimiyya, should be an embodiment of the akhlaq of Zainab alayhi salam. And along these lines, we will be able to revive what it is that we need to with our heads up high and follow with our religion and the commands given to us by Almighty Allah. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin.